reflection of you. All right. So you've given a lot of really great advice already for specific to all university students kind of transitioning from online to in-person or being in-person or being online, as well as Dow um, accounting majors during fourth years. In general, do you have any other advice, any other things that you want to really highlight for management learners? Um, I'd say there was like two big things that I learned um, near the end of my degree that I wished I knew in the beginning. And the first one would be don't push yourself too hard. It is yeah. extremely easy to burn out, um, especially in like the fourth year accounting. I think I, I was burnt out before we hit reading week first semester and it took everything in me to like keep going to the end of the semester and make it through. Um, and like, you don't, you don't have to put yourself in that situation. Like you don't have to push yourself to the point of burning out. Um, and I think a lot of that is like, a lot of us are type A. <laughs> And we like need the, like we want to succeed and we want the good grades. Um, but I finally realized that sometimes like the extra four hours you're spending studying is not worth the extra like 2% you're going to get on the test. This and you is need fantastic to, like, <laughs> advice. It's fantastic nice. and they need to hear it from you because yeah. more is not more and like go yeah. have your, go have a nap. Go like, I don't know, go stare at a wall, go do, go play video games, go for a walk, go just yeah. don't do the extra four hours. Don't. Yeah. It's incremental marginal gains. Um, if somebody looks at your transcripts and sees a, all A pluses, well, it's, it's almost like an indication of, well, what else was missing? It's almost that completeness yeah. test versus if you have a transcript and there's some C's and there's some B's, maybe there's some A's. It's like, cool. Now you have a story. Tell me what you're interested yeah. in. Like, let, let's talk. Let's have a discussion. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think I, nobody even looked at my transcript. Nobody looked, not a single person looked at my this, transcript. Nobody. <laughs> one somebody somewhere like and it was something it was like 12 years after I graduated that they were like asked or something my friend had it um, from a job after she was a CA and designated like for a few years and she was like no <laughs> she's like I don't have it like I, I can't go get it in the time that you wanted yeah. and they're like oh, okay they hired her anyways and like as like a matter of like policy we're like well just when you get it like send it to us and yeah. then I think for one of my grad school applications not all of them but one of them they were like, we just need to like tick the box that you actually got it. But I agree. Like we, like as a student, I thought it mattered. You're saying you mm -hmm. thought it mattered and like telling our students, nobody's going to look at it. You know, it needs to be, would you say the term is like good enough? Yeah. And I think, I think learning that is a very essential part to surviving CPA. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Throughout my entire university degree, I was always aiming for, you know, I was aiming for A's and I did that, but trying to transfer that to the CPA approach was very difficult. And I had to learn that you weren't aiming for perfect. You're just aiming for good enough. Yeah. And when any of like the other new hires who do start with core one, whenever they were asking me for advice, I, that was the one thing I always told them was you're not aiming for perfect. You're just aiming for good enough. Yeah. I, it's difficult. So as a, as a prof, um, and as you know, we developed the CPA, um, questions for the fall, we developed the key in the rubric to say, Hey, like this is the right answer, but it's more like it's the process and you can mm -hmm. get, what is it like? I don't know, 90 pretty much with like a good enough answer. And you can yeah. get, um, so you can get an A or an A plus with a good enough answer. And it's mm -hmm. about, did you show your work? Did you show your process? Were you consistent? Were you supported? Were you reasonable and supported? Which is exactly yeah. CPA. So hopefully, um, I don't know, what, tell me a bit about what you saw with the students. Cause you came in, you did the tutorial and then there, there was mm -hmm. three CPA way assignments um, with three questions each. Mm -hmm. um, did you see that students were aiming for that high, high bar? Or did you see some that were like, hey, like, let's get this good enough and let's move mm -hmm. on? Um, I would say like the first assignment, you could tell that everybody was aiming for perfect. 
I could tell that they spent way too much time on each question and they, you know, they used all their resources they had and they put all their time and energy into this assignment. And even grading it, um, like there was still like things I couldn't give them marks for, like they did all this extra work and I'm like, that's great. But that wasn't the question. Yeah, that wasn't the question. <laughs> not what we talked about in the coaching. Like you, you answered yeah. the question perfectly, but it wasn't what the yeah. user wanted or what the user needed. So mm -hmm. you spent all this extra time and energy and it still wasn't perfect versus yeah. if you just do enough of enough, you might get the same mark. Yeah. And there, there was always like one or two that were better than the solution that I had written. And that's great because I had written the solution um, so that it was attainable. Like I didn't want to write the solution and then go and look at it and be overwhelmed. Yeah. So whenever I saw one that was like better than my solution, I was like, that's great. You're, you're going to do great. I don't need to worry about you. So did you, were, were you ever inclined to kind of tell them, Hey, like, good job. Um, feel free to do less or like you know, in a nice <laughs> way of like saying, Hey, um, you know, because it's hard. It's, we see it in CPA and yeah. with like competency with distinction. We're like, um, unless everything else. So it's mm -hmm. almost like, hey, unless all of your other grades are amazing and you're sleeping eight to 10 hours a night and you're eating a well-balanced diet and you're having fun, yeah. please do not try it like this hard yeah. again. But yeah. it's, it's one of those things that I think we set up the system um, as best we can. You provide that advice, like, hey, like kudos to you, but like, you know, enough of enough. And then yeah. um, hopefully messages like this and, you know, podcasts like this, and maybe Keisha will make this into a clip and we can tell them like, hey, like strive, your, define your success, consider defining it as enough of enough versus perfection. So I like kudos, Anna, um, for sharing that. What's the other piece of advice? You're saying two that you would give your, yeah. yourself. Uh, my second one would be focus on finding a balance because mm. I didn't find a balance. I still don't have a balance, but I'm trying. And that was something that the pandemic really like pushed me to realize was I didn't have a balance and I needed to change that. I didn't want to wait until I was, you know, a partner or wherever in my career and be like, okay, now I have time. Now I'm going to find balance. Yeah. It was, if I'm going to do this, I need to learn to find a balance now so that I can carry it with me. It's, uh, yeah, the type A, type A struggle. <laughs> I think it, for, for me, I'm still learning, but it's like being conscious and being aware and knowing when it feels out of balance. And I know that I try not to compare myself to other people because that's, you know, somebody said that's the thief of um, the thief of joy, because some people are way more productive than I will be and can pound through things and can think mm -hmm. like nobody's business. And, you know, perhaps, um, then there's other people where they might see me as productive and it all mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Cause if I'm struggling day by day, that's not good. Or if I'm having a fabulous time and I'm living my best life and, you know, maybe I'm tipping more towards work now, but like April or I don't know, whatever, like May, May, there's like five hours of work in the whole month. Like that's, you know, so balance can look different to different people, but I think yeah. being aware of it and, um, yeah, I, not a story for this time, but